Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I got uh, another motherboard here. It's a uh, KT7 Turbo version 3 from MSI. It's also known as MSI 6330. So this is a socket A board uh, with SD RAM. It's a 5 volt uh, RAID for the CPU. It has these caps that are blown, they have swollen and I have seen a number of these boards before and uh, I'll check on pictures and these seems to be the first to go. I did one where it said MSI 6330 here and it looks basically identical more or less. Uh, I think the IDE ports are over here instead of over here, so it's a different PCB. But the interesting thing with that one is uh, it has two caps here rated at 2200 microfarads that are coupled to these big ones uh, here for the 700 microfarads for the main V core. It also has a cap here at uh, uh, 1000 microfarads, which this one doesn't have. Uh, there's also a version of this board called uh, the Turbo 2 instead, and uh, when I did that, it had a red PCB with an ISA slot over here instead, which I have a video on that I installed, and it also has the caps installed here and here. So my plan is kinda to recap this and install these caps. First though, I want to check that that one is uh, I think it is for AGP, so probably one and a half volt or something out there, I suspect, at the most 2.3. I can measure that when we post the board, assuming it posts. So yeah, all these boards are kind of functionally the same, uh, they have differences. Uh, they're all via base KT133, some are 12 volts depending on the version, some are 5. So uh, if you have a 12 volt board, you will have a 4 pin connector next to the uh, ATX here. Which is obviously more desirable. Uh, the one with the IC slot is not installed, the Turbo 2. Uh, this board from uh, from what I read is limited to Atom XP1800 Plus at the most. MSI didn't want to support any higher. The, something about the, the socket or pins current limit. But it uh, doesn't make that much sense I think. Because a Thunderbird 1400 I think pulls more than an 1800 Plus if I recall. And uh, I don't I haven't tested obviously because I haven't tested the board, but uh, I suspect you could actually run faster CPUs because they seem to use the same BIOS, but uh, there could be some way they're limiting it. I'm not sure, but uh, this is uh, ideally a Thunderbird board because uh, the older boards tend to support changing the multiplier on unlocked uh, socket uh, or the Thunderbird CPUs. So even if this support on XP. I would go with another board like with DDR and stuff for Nathan XP and this one is uh, better suited for Thunderbirds because if you want to overclock, uh, change the multiplier and stuff, it's not always supported on a newer board because it differs in how it's implemented on the CPU and therefore the motherboard between Thunderbirds and uh, so the Athlons, the original ones and the later Athlon XPs. So uh, later boards might not actually be able to change the multiplier on, a, on an unlocked Athlon. So yeah, this is, uh, as it came with a 1400 Athlon, that's uh, pretty much what this is optimal for. Or maybe a higher end Duron. So yeah, let's test this board and uh, see if it actually still works or not. So for testing here, I have a Duron 800. I call it my Suicide CPU. I have more of those, I think, somewhere. I stole a stick of RAM out of my Pension Treat Lab board, so it should be a good stick. Hopefully, it doesn't die. So, that should be good enough for testing. Let's give it a go. Ah, this one has post LEDs lighting back here. Very nice. I do think we have an image. A blue light, but I don't see anything.
3.34 Stack on some postcode could be any reason for that So what I suspect is going on is that there's a jumper here on the motherboard called uh, I think it's J17 Now I did download the manuals for the board but uh, that one wasn't in there that's kind of annoying but I think that jumper is for selecting between 100 and 120 bus. I think because I had a board and I told the owner like put it down to 100 bus because I'm testing with Durons and he didn't. So I got stuck at 130 bus and tried to basically overcook the Duron to hell. So I think that's it. So I'm gonna put a jumper there. I think it's gonna post. Because I get thinking again is stuck due to the CPU crashing. The LEDs are going and we got a beep. So pretty sure that's it. The manual I downloaded from MSI was very incomplete. I actually didn't have any manuals, it seems, for this. And I also pack all the manuals in EXE files. So the board seems to be working. Oh, this was a Duron 700 also. So I was wrong about that, but I have 800. The board is working. I just uh, jumped for the Atlant 100 1400 that has 132 bus or 266 effectively. So it seems we have a good board with some bad caps. So we're gonna recap it now. So the board is prepped for the hot plate. I like to use that. So let's get it roasting. The board is on the board either. I'm gonna start by removing all the radial uh, mounted ones, the through hole ones here. Then we're gonna do some SMD ones, remove those, but that would be a little bit more tricky because we need to cover up a lot of plastic and stuff and components so we don't melt and destroy stuff. So we're just below 80 centigrade here on the board. So let's try this big one here. Fairly heavy, so I figured it would fall out themselves, but uh, let's see here. Probably would, but uh, the holes are a little bit tight apparently. I'm gonna put down some flux here, mostly for the solder mask, so the solder doesn't stick to it as easily. It's not a problem, but you have to clean it by the solder. I just don't want tin on the mask that I clean off. It can get in somewhere else that I don't like. For example, creating a short. So. It's almost like grease on the solder mask, the flux that just keeps it, the solder from not sticking a little bit. Oh, that came. to clean these holes here. I'm just gonna add some solder so I can actually get my iron in there. And we need to clean these holes also so we can add uh, the caps I want here. Upgrade it basically to the more fancier versions. I have spare caps for it, so it's not needed, but yeah, why not try something? We have removed the radial caps, so we should now also remove the SMD caps. But before we do that, I want to just have a look at the old caps. 
So I saved some samples here, so we can start with the incoming here. Uh, these are for 5 volts incoming to the MOSFETs. So they are rated 3900 microfarads. So we can check uh, what kind of values we get in those. So 4059 microfarads, uh, 1.9% uh, VLOS, and these are registers like basically like zero. So they're probably in the uh, like 10 or about uh, VLOMs uh, resistance for. Uh, ESR equivalent series resistance. So you can check out a V core cap here. So they would go with the four, one, four ones going around the socket here where the meter is. So that measures 5535 microfarads and 1.9% VLOS, uh, basically zero ohm ESR. So very low. I don't know exactly how low these are. I think like the ones of bought is 13 milliohms or something, could be or 11. But yeah, really low. So that's fine. There's nothing obviously wrong with the vehicle caps on this board yet, at least. So this is a new replacement Panasonic Low ESR. It's rated 10 volts instead, 4700. And I'm gonna use them over here too because uh, buying 10 of these with tax cost me about two. Uh, 15, 15 or 16 dollars and buying them uh, separately uh, below 10 units because you get uh, you get that price reduction as you go up in uh, volume so if I bought less than 10 they cost almost around two dollars for tax so I bought uh, to put some over here too because it doesn't really matter that much if you have 4700 or 3900 over here uh, we need the same voltage rating anyway so you're gonna check that one out but I expect this one to have similar values to the old one. Uh, 5681, VLOS 1.3, and basically can't measure the ESR, it's very low. Uh, that's why these are expensive. We obviously had some broken caps, and uh, yeah, uh, this one's swollen, so we can measure them. They might measure something, they might not, depends on how broken they are, but these have started to leak, uh, bulged. Leak. So these were 2700 microfarads and I'm gonna replace them with equivalent uh, Panasonic Lois So we've got 465 microfarads, so it's not completely dead. But the VLOS is, VLOS is almost 35%. ESR is over 1 ohm. So yeah, the new ones will be like 10 milliohms. This one is uh, dead. Then we got these, uh, I think they're 1000, yeah, 1006.3 volt. These are all over place for like ADP power. Uh, VR memory, but also PCI and so on, so they, they might see uh, different workloads depending. Some will run hotter than others and die sooner rather than later. So that 1853 1, microfarads, 3.5% VLOS, pretty much no ESR, so they are low ESR, but that's a very high value. I don't know why, if they just spec that. Uh, up to 100% over maybe, or if it's something up with it, but VLOS 3.5 seems a little bit high, but I'm not an expert on VLOS, but when new caps I buy, it tends to always be under 2%, so 3.5 seems a little bit high, might be going bad. So this is another one, just like it, and I have tested these two, I've actually picked them on random, and saved two of them, I think it's first two removed here. And you can see that is 730 microfarads and 9.7% VLOS, so that is high. Uh, it's R1.35, so that's high, quite opposite. So that one I would say is definitely bad. The other one, questionable, weird. But yeah, so some of these uh, smaller ones are definitely not good anymore. So I think if you really wanted to, if you had taken board apart to this point, you could technically put back the VRM caps then coming here and uh, run the socket for the V-core. And just recap the rest, because it seems like uh, the V-core caps are all fine. Everything else is hit and miss. Or already dead. So you could do a partial recap on a board like this. But I have new caps and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna fully recap it, but we're gonna remove the SMD caps here now, so I have to like uh, mask everything off here. So I have uh, masked off the board with uh, aluminium foil, kept on tape and uh, 
some of it, it also contains some paper. Uh, Pre-made uh, mask I have over here. I usually use this along a PCI AGP slot. So we have a cap here, 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 and two over there. So I'm gonna try and not uh, blow at the direction of plastics and stuff like that. Avoid the most sensitive stuff. Let's see if we can get some new caps in here. I'm gonna tin one side here and add some flux. So on the screen here I have the cap list for the motherboard and I have uh, put in optional caps here based on the other revisions of the MS6330 or the sometimes known as K70 Turbo 1 and 2. So the optional ones are well optional. You can add them if you want I guess. I haven't tried it. I don't see why it would be, a, be an issue. So yeah it's a little bit funny though that V core caps are two different sizes but yeah. And then we got uh, the 3.3 volt rail seems to be over here for the uh, AGP it seems. So I clean that out here. So I'm gonna install that because that do exist on some boards, not this one particular here that. And then I'm gonna install these two extra vehicle caps here. But we'll start with the, uh, well this cap and the other ones like it. So these caps here are uh, Panasonic low ESR F4 series.
I think next up will be those two caps here. They are rated at 2700 microfarads origi originally. Uh, I bought that because I needed that for the Pension 2 build, the power supply I think. And uh, since these are 2200 rated over here, if you want to install those. I actually bought like 10 of the 2700 instead because it's cheaper. Uh, you, get, you get really bait at, uh, when you hit 10 most of the time. So I'm going to upgrade these from 2200 to 2700. So these two here will be the same as these two here. And that's just cheaper to do it that way. And some extra capacity, like one notch up, uh, shouldn't really matter that much. We have so much on these other two already. So percentage wise isn't that big of a deal. And there's like a tolerance of around 20% on most modern caps anyway. So these 2700, that's the one here, 2800 microfarad, VLOS was 2.6. It's a big copper plane here. There is some flux on top here. Just helps uh, getting a nice solid joint because it uh, will pull down uh, on the, the solder. If you just, if I just put it on the flux on here first, uh, it just uh, flow out on the board. And I didn't come up with this. I see the pro, the actual professionals do it that way. It seems to work for them, so I figure it worked for me. So you just get a little bit better solder joints when uh, when things are a little bit tough and things are hot at all on the C axis so to speak. So I think there's just the big ones left. So I'm gonna use six of those because uh, these are 4700 microfarads, like the original ones around the CPU here. That one, that one, that one, that one. But these were 3900. But both are essentially rated at 6.3 volt originally because there's 5 volt in here and then we got the V core, which is like 1.75 for a Thunderbird. So I bought these, uh, these are rated 10 volts, 4700. So we're just gonna use those here because this was cheaper. Uh, instead of buying like four of those and two of those, I think they cost about the same as this. So I get four over for something else. So for like a, when I mass produce these things, I assume 3900 are a little bit cheaper than uh, say 4700. But they would be buying like thousands of them, I guess. So in their case, buying two different types probably makes more sense. Plus it, there might be a difference in availability also, who knows? So it might just be good idea to not uh, have the same type everywhere. I don't know. I'm just guessing a little bit there. Speculating. For me as a uh, well, home user here, an amateur, recapping a board, it's uh, easy just to go one type here. Just like we did with these. Just becomes cheaper. If I were to do a lot more boards, like multiple boards every week and getting well paid for it, uh, I could definitely stock more Types of caps. Right now I'm stocking almost no types. I forgot how annoying these are. It kind of fits. Yeah. The leads on these are very thick. I 
things here. Some really um, thick legs, some massive thick boys. So nice chunky ground plane, very ground or V core. Time for the incoming bulk filtering case here. The board is fully recapped. I'm gonna check for shorts, things like that, and orientation values. And uh, then I'm gonna clean it, and then we can test it. So the board came out of the oven, and I think it turned up really nicely. So only thing left to do now is to reinstall some stuff we removed. So we are ready to fire this up. I installed a GeForce for MX here as well in the AGP slot now. CMOS battery of Lisley. So power on. Now I picked that card because it has the DVI connector, so that's nice. Blue light. So we're in the BIOS here. So I'm gonna configure the BIOS and uh, we can install something I figure on this machine. So we landed in Windows 98 here. I had uh, a pre-installed hard drive. So we got our 700 meter Duron here. Spitfire core. And in the middle here we got a motherboard. And that's MSI MS6330. So even if it says K70 Turbo on it, the the turbo and the turbo 2 the, are the same kind of board as the the MS6330 because MSI tend to always have a number for the boards. So yeah. And we got the GeForce 4 MX440 here. Uh, I don't know if I can see the BIOS revision here. Yeah, you can see not the model BIOS date here. But I know it's 2.9 because uh, that's what it shows at post and uh, it seems like we need 3.0 at least for supporting Atlon XP. That's the first mention of Atlon XP I can see. So I did put uh, that on here in this folder here before. 
So it says K seventy C. So let's see here. So you can see up here, BIOS version three point five is the latest, I think. Make sure we good enough. Uh, it's for K seventy Pro MS six twenty three thirty Light. I have already kept one of those. I think it's a sticker on the south which that says Light. And that's the Pro two, Pro two A. Uh, turbo, Turbo Limited, and K6 Turbo 2. Uh, yeah. And the, the only thing between light and this one thing is that the light doesn't have the extra PCI slot. Uh, if I can say. But anyway, the BIOS is here and the program is there. So what we're gonna do is restart and go into face safe command prompt. Save command from only will not load anything as you can see. So it's essentially like a boot up floppy. So let's see here, where did I put it? Uh, MS6330. So we're gonna have to run uh, OVD flash here. 789. And then we need a file. Six. S.350 uh, Bad command uh -huh. Okay, this is the third time I'm thinking I'm getting way too tired for this I'll be F L789 I wish there was autocomplete in DOS but no Okay, let's see here. File to program to save BIOS. Now I can download it. File to program. Yeah, okay, let's Should say BIOS 2.5 now, I guess. Posting at least, so that's a good thing. 2.5, that's nice. So now we're already back in Windows here. Could actually run something on it. So we can run this uh, demo here. I'm just gonna lower the resolution on the monitor to get the best possible score on full screen. I'm gonna go settings here, full screen as a desktop resolution. And then benchmark. I got a score. I think uh, I can't remember exactly what I got with the GeForce 3, but I think that's reasonable for. Uh, but it's a GeForce 4 MX because it's uh, basically a GeForce 2 with high clocks. So that seems reasonable for a benchmark. So the motherboard is complete. I did add a sticker over here for the bus. So a black box for uh, 100 meters FSB and a white box for 133. Uh, you can set in the bias 132 with uh, the 100 bus uh, jumper setting here, but I think if you move it, I haven't tested, but I usually how it is, uh, then you can set uh, 133 up. So you have like two different uh, spans, uh, bands, so to speak. But other than that, this motherboard is complete, and yeah, probably gonna sell it. Not that. I want to, it's actually a very nice motherboard, especially for Atlan Thunderbird. But uh, I have enough boards and uh, yeah, can't just hoard everything. Uh, I do need to get some cash for finishing other projects, so that's how it goes. You, sell, you fix some, you sell it, and then you fix some again, the things you want to keep, so yeah.
but that's it for this video so thank you for watching and have a nice day